I'm Aiden Stalker. I'm an application engineer in the Mobile on Highway group, and I primarily design bearings into axle centers and wheel ends for our automotive customers. It's important to make sure that the bore of your bearing and the shaft are in proper relation to each other, as well as the OD of your bearing and the housing that it's going in. When you maintain the proper fits, you're more likely to have success in your application. So for the bearing fitting practice, all you're gonna start with is part search. You can type in whatever part you want. For this example, we'll use the LM503-349. And then we have several options here. I'm just gonna use this one. And then I'm going to switch to Imperial units. So first off, if you haven't seen my prior video on tolerances, it's worth checking that out. Also, check out our help guide here. The help guide has helpful information on bearing fitting practice, things to consider, how fitting practice works, and a little bit of the background on what makes a good selection. So for this part number here, we have the LM503349 paired with the CUP LM503310. So first off, we get to choose our application type. For this example, I'm going to start with an automotive application. We are going to show you a few different options here, but let's start with a rotating cone. So a rotating cone would be something we'd see on a pinion, where the cup is stationary and the cone is rotating. And then for this pinion, we can choose um, between three options here. Let's say this is a head bearing and choose the non-adjustable option. What this means is that the cone is uh, backed by the, the pinion gear itself or a step there ahead of time. And so because the cone is backed in that location, it is non-adjustable. You cannot change the setting of your TRB by moving that uh, cone in any way. Then we can go ahead and calculate And we can come down here and see the suggested fitting practice. This takes into account the cone tolerances and gives you a recommended cone seat to get the resultant fits and the range specified here. And this has between one to two thou tight, and it recommends a tight fit on this cone because the cone is the rotating member. And if you have a loose fit, you risk creep or fretting between the cone bore and the shaft itself. You want to make sure that those don't move relative to each other. Next, let's do the outer fitting practice for this bearing. So let's stick with the pinion here. So let's go with the uh, automotive applications. We'll do a stationary cup because the cup should not be rotating in the housing. And then we will select a solid seat for the pinion because the cup has a solid seat behind it. There is nothing that is uh, moving the seat or it is not split like in some differentials. This one is for the pinion. And then this will be non-adjustable because you cannot move the cup to change this setting. And we'll hit calculate. We see a summary of the options that we selected here and then down to the fitting practice suggested. This suggests half a thou tight to two and a half thou tight and gives you the cup seat that you would bore into your housing to get the proper fits here between your cup and your housing. Let's do another example for bearing fitting practice. So we'll clear out our prior example and this time let's put in a ball bearing. I'll do 6310. Then I'm going to look this up and use metric because this is an ISO part and it has nice round values in metric. Then you can select your bearing class here. Please see the tolerances or the help guide if you need help determining your bearing class. So for the 63010, we're going to come down here to the inner ring fitting practice and we're going to suggest the load type. You can choose between stationary inner ring load 
rotating inner ring load or indeterminate and our thrust loads. For this, we'll choose a standard rotating inner ring load. For the conditions, we'll do normal conditions here with the load limit between 0 0.07 CE and 0.15 CE as a range between our normal loads. And then we'll calculate what this inner ring fitting practice should be based on that. Here's a summary of the parameters that we input. And here's our output. It suggests between 25 micron tight and 2 micron tight. And here are the shaft OD dimensions that it suggests here for manufacturing your shaft to make sure that you get this inner ring tight fit based on the tolerances for this part number at the class specified. The bearing fitting practice tool will be able to help you design your fits right for your application. And you can access this tool at engineering.timken.com.